Today on MarcusNews.com, nothing ages and kills you faster than stress. Learn the important connection between your adrenal glands and vitamin C and what herbs to take to rebuild your adrenals. We make health easy and simple at MarcusNews.com. Today's guest is medical expert James Sloan. Cancer is something that obviously has been, it's, it doesn't just pop up one day. It's like something that's been building over a long time. And then they come to you at the last minute and say, I've got cancer, what do I do? Yeah, usually they come to me after the conventional therapies have failed and you know they're down to um, like stage four it's like yeah. you know what can I do at this point and uh, which there are things that can still be done I don't consider somebody terminal until they're dead <laughs> right right so so obviously ozone is, is a big one yeah more I always tell everybody well you, don't even think about what to take until you stop doing what caused the problem. For be, you have to be aware of what got you there in the first place. And a lot of people don't want to think about that. And diet and lifestyle is a big part of it. And it's not just what you eat. It's also, for instance, stress. They're working at a job that they can't stand and it's stressing out. The relationship they're in, uh, just they're, they're just not happy with life. They can't sleep at night, they're, which lowers their adrenals, which lowers everything. Your stomach acid is low, adrenals are shot. And it's this big chain reaction in their body just from stress alone. Maybe we should talk about stress. Well, as far as immunity goes, the biggest issues with stress is when you're under stress, you tax your adrenal glands. And as your adrenal glands go down, uh, well, let me back up here a little bit. Your adrenal glands require more vitamin C than any other part of the body. They get priority of the entire rest of the body. So we under a lot of stress, you start taxing your adrenals. Your adrenals have a higher uh, demand for vitamin C. If all the vitamin C is going to the adrenals, then you have less vitamin C going to other critical uh, places of the body, like the thymus gland, for example, is also highly dependent on vitamin C. But if the adrenals are getting priority, your thymus gland, which is your master gland of immunity, is now going down. So that's one of the big factors. Same reason, you know, people go through the aging process again. Uh, a lot of it's because of lack of vitamin C. Like you look at somebody who has methamphetamine addiction and they'll age like that. Yeah. Well, what's happening is they're, they're overstimulating their adrenals so bad that the adrenals are just sucking up any available vitamin C and there's no vitamin C going back to things like uh, collagen formation. So they start, their teeth start falling out and uh, their skin wrinkles up because they're lasting loss because, you know, lack of vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C is also needed for things like activation of your white blood cells. And in fact, it's kind of interesting because um, a lot of people know that sugar does suppress the immune system, but very few people understand why it does. And the reason for that is that sugar and vitamin C both require insulin for transport. So when you consume a lot of sugar, you use up all the uh, available insulin, so it's not sitting there directing the vitamin C to the white blood cells, so the white blood cell activity goes down. Yeah, vitamin C is like one of the most important vitamins. Stress is a big one. I mean, it just kills vitamin C, and we need that for everything. Yeah, smoking, or say if people are say, downing the Red Bulls, or other caffeines. Yeah, and it's not just the, the, the chemical stuff. It's also, there, there's, there's herbal st stimulants that people take. Just, the people are constantly trying to keep that buzz going so they can keep that energy because nobody wants to crash and eating right god forbid that that's a thing they have to do so they're going to do what they can take these ephedra pills or something you know as, you know yeah, grana is a big one now yeah. And grana is some bad stuff. I don't like that stuff at all. It bombs out my blood sugar like crazy. I've only taken it like twice in my entire life. That's back when I used to race triathlons. And uh, they, it just came out on the market way back then. It was like 19, about 82 or 83, somewhere in that area. And it just came on the market and they were passing them out at one of the triathlons. And I said, well, boost your performance and all this. And all it is, it bombed out my blood sugar so bad they didn't call the paramedics on me when I crossed the finish line because I was as white as a ghost. Is there anything that brings you up it's going to cra it's got to balance out so you're going to get just the just as low or even lower afterwards so i say it's better just have a steady supply of energy rather than try to get up here for a short period of time because you're going to pay the price stress is uh it just kills so many things in your body. Like your, your stomach acid goes down, so now you're not that absorbing the food, the nutrition that you need. Yeah, particularly your uh, nutrients required for methylation. Again, methylation is required for about 4,000 reactions in the body. So now you have another factor that's gonna suppress your immune system due to the lack of methylation. Uh, hormone neurotransmitter imbalances, decreased cartilage synthesis, even lack of, you know, uh, less production of stomach acid because methylation is required for more stomach acid formation. So yeah, that's another big factor right there as well. I mean, st stress is really, really bad on the body and uh, yet people are actually increasing their stress, not just from being in situations they don't like. Because if you don't like your job, 
instead of going to find another job, they, they put up with it. But they're also doing things, again, like they're downing all the caffeine and they're smoking the cigarettes. And comfort foods and, yeah. yeah. Those actually can, you know, aggravate the condition. Because especially, so the stimulus crash your adrenals. Your adrenals produce your anti-stress hormones. So when people like, they fly off the handle real easy and stuff, their adrenals are crashed. Instead, they're uh, anti-stress hormones saying just calm down, it's not that bad. They, just, they fly off the handle because their adrenals aren't working properly. Obviously, you gotta get rid of the source of stress. And some people say, well, I can't do that. Well, I'm sorry, you have to, it's that simple. And they say, well, just give me some herbs to take. What do I take? And you know, so I can calm down. And there are herbs we can take to calm down, but if the source is still there, it's almost like this, this it's still brewing quietly under the surface, you know. Yeah, if you're in a situation where you can't get rid of your stress or whatever, the best thing you can do is you control the stress. And again, that's work on the adrenal glands because your adrenal glands produce your anti-stress hormones. Smoking a cigarette is not going to, you know, people say, well, it calms me. No, it doesn't. It actually crashes the adrenals more, and so you end up stressing more, and so you smoke more, so you stress. You know, it's this vicious cycle. You have to build your adrenal glands, and your adrenal glands will keep you on that even keel. And there's various ways of doing that. There are herbs, what they call adaptogenic herbs. Uh, some of my favorites are Jogalong, uh, which I drink, that's my tea. I'm drinking all day. I, I like my Jogalong. Uh, it's a little bitter tasting, but you get the use of the flavor, it's actually pretty good. Uh, I like Shasandra Berry, it's a really, really good adaptogenic herb. Ashwagandha is a great one. It also raises GABA levels in the brain, which has a calming effect on the body. And then there's licorice root, but there is the, there's the American version of licorice root, which is G. glabra, and then you've got uh, the Chinese version, which is G. arulensis. Now, the American version is stimulatory, the Chinese version is calming, so I do prefer the Chinese licorice root over the American licorice root. Um, and another one that's stimulatory I tend to avoid is arctic root, which is rhodiola rosea, and that's actually a stimulant even though it's considered an adaptogen, it is a stimulant. And so if your adrenals are super weak to begin with, it could be overstimulatory to the adrenals. So I tend to stay away from that one as well. So I stick to you know, astragalus, Siberian ginseng, jiaogulong, licorice root, uh, ashwagandha, suma is a really good one. So those are some of my favorite adaptogenic okay, So you've got your adaptogenic herbs. And other, there's other things needed for... Vitamin C, because they said adrenals get priority on vitamin C over the entire rest of the body. C. Yeah, natural sources, not, right, right. You, know, you don't want the synthetic stuff in the... Uh, back in high school chemistry, so we took uh, samples of synthetic ascorbic acid and we did samples of light, heat, moisture. And after about 40 minutes, we tested it for vitamin C activity. In each case, it was completely destroyed. There was no vitamin C left. It's a very, very unstable molecule. So what was the white powder that was left lying on the table? It breaks down doxylic acid. So what you had after light, heat, and moisture uh, was exposed to you. So you got, so let's say I go to the store and I buy vitamin C powder, ascorbic acid, and I lay it on the table and I blast it with light. I just put it out in the sun, yeah. right? Or, or spray it with some water so it's moist, um, or heat it up. I'm gonna have oxalic acid. It's yeah, well, it is considered a poison and they use it for wood bleach and rust remover and stuff like that. Or even the intravenous vitamin C solutions I think is a total joke. It's kind of funny because they have these clear bags yeah. hanging in light. Yeah, right? with fluid, with water. With water, so the water knocks it out. Yeah. And so what, so what they're actually pumping these people full of is oxalic acid. Exactly. Which just have, again, it has its point of binding free iron, but as far as boosting the immune system and stuff, it's not doing anything because it's not vitamin C anymore. You know, it takes on average around a couple hours to infuse uh, an IV, yet again, the vitamin C in the presence of light and uh, moisture is broken down in about 40 minutes. So if you do the math, most of what's going into the body is not, definitely not vitamin C anymore. So I, I really don't get into the, the vitamin C like that. I like natural sources again, which, you know, your uh, papaya, kiwis, mangoes, peppers, uh, berries, particularly blueberries, because I like the, the darker green berries for higher antioxidants. The vitamin C in plants tends to be more stable and stronger. Like they found with amla berry, for example, the vitamin C in there is going to be lower, but it's actually 12 times stronger than synthetic vitamin C. So you don't need the massive doses in a plant-based vitamin C because of higher stability and generally higher activity, except there are some exceptions, again, camo-camo being too unstable, but there are, most of the vitamin C sources out there 
are more stable and have a higher vitamin C activity. So let's say you have a, a pot of powdered Indian gooseberry, amla. I mean, it could last quite a while, right? Oh, yeah. A couple I, of years. I would give it at least probably five, six years because the high tannin content and the tannins are polyphenols are antioxidant and they actually protect the vitamin C in the amla berry from oxidation, which is also why amla berry, the vitamin C in there is heat stable, as where most sources of vitamin C are not heat stable. So you could have a, a, a whole jug of powdered plant vitamin C sitting on a shelf, what you're saying, for, for years. Mm -hmm. Whereas opposed to the ascorbic acid you buy at the store, you're basically buying oxalic acid, right? <laughs> and it's not even vitamin C anymore. So, okay, there's people out there uh, that are saying the big trend now. Oh, oh lipo C. That's yeah. Not a big fan of that. Uh, the issue I've always seen with the lipo C is basically they're taking a normally water soluble compound. Um, better back up here again for a second. You know, your cell has uh, lipid components, it has water components that are separate from each other. So lipids are the fats. So you have these two separate components. Now, your vitamin C is normally water soluble, so it acts as an antioxidant in the water soluble components of the cell. It's not found in the lipid soluble components. Now, when you make it into lipo C, you're now putting this substance into a part of the cell where it's not naturally found. And we don't know what the long term side effects of putting this now you know, lipid soluble vitamin C into a part of the cell that's never seen vitamin C since the you know, start of mankind. And I just, I don't trust that. Yeah. You know, yeah. people are screwing with nature. I mean, they'll sit there and complain about the pharmaceutical companies that are taking plants and are tweaking them to make these pharmaceutical drugs yet. And that's what they're doing with the lipo C. Exactly. And they're saying it's a natural thing. It's like a health thing. Exactly. exactly. I mean, I, I don't believe in cheating nature. I, don't, I, I figure it's whatever works, works. Whatever it doesn't, it's, it's not doing it. And there's a reason nature's not doing that. Exactly. Like, you know, everybody's also trying to you know, get the absorption of curcumin up. You know, curcuminoids are found in turmeric, and it's very poorly absorbed. And everybody's, you know, working so hard about, how do I increase the absorption of the curcuminoids? And stuff? Well, maybe there's a reason it's not supposed to be absorbed. Just like a lot of plants contain these uh, saponins. Well, saponins are not absorbed through the gut. If they were, they hemolysize your red blood cells. So they'd end up creating all sorts of, we can end up with hemolytic anemia, we can end up kidney damage, all sorts of stuff if we were to absorb those saponins. So the body who is smarter than we are is sitting there saying, I'm not gonna allow those saponins to be absorbed. Right. So if the curcuminoids aren't being that absorbed, or absorbed that well, why would you try to increase it when there's a reason they weren't being absorbed that well in the first place. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things you maintain your immune system, which, you know, avoiding stress again is one of the biggest ones. And, you know, eating healthy, make sure you maintain things like your adrenals and your thymus gland. And, yeah. but to me, I said, stress will kill you faster than anything. So I just tell people, you know, watch your stress. And, and there's always ways of getting around stress, whether it be, you know, you say you work on your adrenals or, um, I used to go for runs or right. jump on my bicycle and go to another state or something, you know, do things like that. But, you know, everybody has what, they have to find what works for them. It could be soft, relaxing music. You can go and t take a warm bath in this dark room, light a candle, or even just light the candle and just watch that flame flicker in a dark room. It's actually very mesmerizing, calming. Yeah. Um, pets, great for reducing stress. So, you know, there's all sorts of ways of doing it. People just have to figure out what works best for them to keep their stress levels down. Right. Well, thanks, James. Well, thank you. Well, looking forward to the next video. The most powerful herbal vitamin C on the planet is the Wild Force Super Vitamin C with six and a half thousand milligrams of vitamin C per hundred grams. Also, the most powerful adaptogenic herbs to help rebuild your adrenals are in the age free formula, like jogulin, ashwagandha, he show woo, grapeseed extract, astragalus, lagitanin, and licorice root. The night rebuild formula helps you sleep and rebuild your hormones needed for healthy adrenals with magnesium, licorice root, nettle leaf, suma, holy basil, passion flower, and geranium. You can get everything as the adrenal kit at healanything.com. Keep watching marcusnews.com. We show you how to rebuild your life.